An hour passed and his eyes started to adjust to the darkness. He tried making out the words, but it was a struggle. Then he saw them. He gasped. When he finally read out the sentence, followed by a deep growl. <sighs> we only had a second to acknowledge it before a large crocodile snapped its jaws in our direction. <laughs> the thing looked like it was in constant agony. Once it hovered directly above me, I heard faint whispering coming from its mouth. I didn't have... We're just talking about makeup. This is going to go in the pod. Uh, I haven't got... I look like I've got Botox. Cover... Like, do you know what I mean? And then I've also put my Elmez primer on, which makes me all glowy. Elmez. What did you hear there? What did I say? Great. Uh, well, this is staying in. El Elmez. It's Elmez. It's Elmez. That, you're saying it like Hermes. That might be what I'm doing. Hermes. Hermes is a bag. The H is silent, Susie. Hermes. Hermes. Her no, I, that is what I'm doing, what's yeah. the What's the delivery company called? Hermes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Hermes. 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 No, I, you're wrong. France! <laughs> France! Well, in that case... <gasps> Welcome to <laughs> oh, yeah. episode, episode 37. 37 of Ghost Hunts. Ghost Hunts. Ghost, 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 ghost. I think that's the funniest thing I've ever seen on the internet. What? France! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the beauty pageant woman. <laughs> it is. Every now and then, so I'll just you, say it in the flat. You say it a lot nicer than what she gets. France! France! <laughs> She is. It's like she lost She's, confidence and hit puberty oh, all at once. It's like she lost confidence, hit puberty, had a breakdown. Yeah. And oh, some... I, do you know what? It's such a relatable thing of being like, this is my moment and mm. all I need to do is say one word. Yeah. And there's so much in your head of like, don't fuck it up. Remember to get smice, turn your shoulder. She's do you know like, what though? I did, oh! I did have the exact same feeling when I did um, the Weakest Link celebrity version. <laughs> Yeah, what happened? Do you, do you remember no, any of the questions? You know that, yeah, I can't say, but we'll talk, we'll discuss it when it comes out. But one of the things I do remember was it had to go around to everybody who was on the... I can't say who they were, but everybody who was on my episodes, mm. it started off with someone else. And then you had to say your, na that your, your name, occupation, and where you're from. But it went in one shot, and I was the last one. So if I fucked it up, everyone... And I have never ever been so scared of Name saying... Name and occupation. I've never been so scared of saying, I'm Hannah, comedian, podcaster, and winner of The Traitors season one from Stoke on Trent. Ah, oh, that's great. Nailed but, it. Yeah, but Did it you so, not on the real I was. Thing? I've never been... That was the most nervous I've ever felt. I've done gigs yeah. to hundreds of people. I've done new material <laughs> no, to I, two people. I I've completely done, get it. And I've because never it's just been a little nervous. sound bite and it's so easy. It's like it's when... My, it, brain was too, my brain was like two steps behind yeah. my voice as well. Yeah. So I was like... I've had a, a comedian, yeah. podcaster, and winner of um, Bastard, not Master Chef, Bake Off. Bastard no, Chef. Not Bastard. Bast I'm the winner of Bastard Chef. <laughs> I would have fucking died if you said that. I'd have been like, it's a shame you didn't well, you know plug what? the podcast. Everybody but... else would have done because they would have had to do theirs all over a fucking gown. I'm but the winner of, of them, Bastard Chef. One of them, it was so funny, I can't say who it was, but one of them was like. <laughs> They're like, my name's Um, I'm a dancer. I'm known for this. I'm a dance educator. I'm an educator. And they were like, we can't have all that in. Just, we need to go out yeah, like four things. Jack of all trades. It was, so, it was like, let's get everything in. But I kind of did the same And so well. many people have so many job titles. It's I like, know. podcaster, producer, director, I know. actor, sitcom I know. maker, I just comedian. wanted to get comedian podcaster in. Yeah, I love that. And they insisted on the winner of the traitors. I didn't add that in myself. Sure, Hannah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, shall we jump straight in? I think we fucking I just should. Wanted to, I just want to reiterate again oh. that we did a record of Patreon, our Patreon episode last night. Oh. And I don't want to blow my own fucking horn. But, but she will. 
But it was fucking great. It was. It, it's, it's There was spooky elements, the scares. We were in a haunted pub. Yeah, so it's the we, we recorded it in the place that I do my um the night that I host at the exhibit in Ballum. And uh just you know how like people casually tell you a ghost story. You know when you're like, Oh, we're just doing a podcast upstairs, we're just doing a little Patreon and yeah, yeah. and he's like, Oh, what's it about? And you're like, oh, ghosts. And then he just goes, Oh, there's a ghost here. Oh, yeah. like, oh, there's a ghost here. And you're Victorian like, sorry, ghost. why did you say that under your breath? What are you talking about? And he's like, oh, the Victorian woman. It's all on the episode. We yeah. we tell you the stories that they told us and they're really it's, fucking creepy. It, it does get really creepy. I was a bit freaked out last night, to be honest. I was. Yeah. I was scared. I know. Okay. Do you, you have any tips for me for surviving a haunted house in Edinburgh? Do I have any tips? Like lights on all night? Like what's the vibe? How am lights, I going to survive this? Lights on is, I, th- I find that lights on is a bit. I find it makes it worse because there's nothing worse than waking up at 3 a.m. with all your lights on. It's really weird. Have you ever done it? Yeah, I probably, I probably won't because also I really it's will need the sleep You'll be knackers. I know. You'll be absolutely... I think get absolutely obliterated drunk every day. That's what I was thinking, substance abuse. Four bottles yeah. of peanut before Yeah. It, what? What's How the worst that could happen? Just of... fuck my liver up for ha- a month. No, but it's only 28 days. You're not even 28 days. It's only going to be about 25 oh days. God, 28 days later. God, I'm going to be like a fucking zombie. <laughs> no, I think you just need to get... <laughs> Good times. Is it in the centre of Edinburgh or do you, will you bus in? No, no, it's it's pretty central. It's near the meadows. Oh, amazing! It's good. It's just that the room then I will is, come is and on stay. the street, so it's the it's the ground floor. The bedroom's right on the ground floor, and it's a big three story house. Amazing. But I'm like, yeah, I know, but don't isn't that where serial ki- killers come? No, the, through the, the window. The, the street. good thing is, is that you you don't because I hate walking upstairs in the dark. That's my biggest. I because I'm always worried that someone's behind me. I did it oh, the other night at my mom and dad's. I'm thirty three. And as I was turning all the lights off, I ran upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Because I can yeah. imagine all these little fucking minging creatures coming after yeah, me. Yeah, coming to grab your ankles. Scares shit out of me, can't do it. But if your bedroom's on the ground floor, you can then just walk through the front door into bed, no issues. I always need to pee in the night, though. A 3 a.m. was. Also, put on a fun podcast. What, to, to the loo to. with me through the all dark of kitchen? It, yeah, all of it, yeah. Have a piss in the bush outside. Before you go in. I might just have a little bucket by my bed. Have a bucket by your bed. <laughs> go full Victorian toilet bowl. I'm going to have to because already I'm getting the fucking... If, if you have any tips, by the way, please, please send them in. Because I'm th- th- by the time this one goes out, I'll be bedded in. Yeah. Or you've got to be in bed by like 7pm so it's still light in the house. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As as never see, the, our, as never as see the dark. As soon as we've done our show in Legends Downstairs, 6.35 every day. Um, as soon as we've done that, you just, just go immediately to bed. Yeah. You, can't have, you can't do anything else. No, you're right. For the rest no, of you're right. Bed. And I'm, that's fine. I'm enough. willing to take any advice. You are going to have to figure it out, though, because we are going to be getting, we are going to be doing recordings in Edinburgh, so we can't stay. We, we're going to be haunted. I mean, look, I don't mind being haunted. It's just being haunted alone. Yeah, it's not fun, is you, it? Like... And like, well, I'll come and stay for one night. Yeah, could you? <laughs> Figure out the way, the rest of the 24. Okay. Um, would you like a bloody... No, tarot, no, tarot. Jesus. I haven't said it before. Oh, what? You said tarot? I said go and get your tarot card. What, are you having a lozenge or something? I'm rubbing my eyes. Oh, don't do that. No one... No, no, no. You're like a fucking creepy chipmunk. <laughs> right. Here we go. <laughs> I'm actually get jealous when it's your turn because I love picking the towel. It's a lot of responsibility though. If you pick the towel, we're fucked. Can you pick me something good, please? I've got a show tonight that I don't think is going to go well. Okay, got it, got it. Okay. Here we bloody go. I've just seen it by the How... way when you put it down. What? What was it? Was it good? No. <laughs> oh my god! What? It's exactly the same one as last week. That was yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, yeah, last week. It is though. Polka dot shawl. That is so weird. He's bench pressing. It was a lovely, wasn't cup. it? It was really nice. Oh well, Christ! It was like success, teamwork. What is it? Three of fucking all the good stuff. That's so weird. Me and Susie have got two coffees each, by the way, because we're fucking knackered. Yeah, the uh, well, we've had. Oh my God! Yeah. Symbolises successful teamwork. Amazing. Achieving early success. Exactly. It, it's doing the same. There's a theme. That's so fucking spooky. It is weird that you've picked out of two all of weeks those. in a row. 
you've picked. Or maybe it was two weeks ago that we picked that. No. I um. Anyway, that's that's so it, weird. Was it last week? Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Um, you, if if you'd have said then before you picked, if you'd have said you get a million quid if I pick the right card. Mm. Do you want to bet that I won't or I will? And I'd have gone, of course I want to bet that you won't pick the same card. Yeah, right. You wouldn't. And now I'd be out a and million And now the quid. odds. The odds are. The odds are ever. Uh, the tarot is. is uh, oh, what? Stop it. Someone, what? Just, just, someone just lent in and I know who it is. Can we say? No. Can we not? No, I don't think we should. There's someone really funny. There's a famous politician who just literally looked into oh, the studio. Oh, was it? Yeah. Can't say any more than that. Anyway. Was it him? George Dosborne. <laughs> Hannah, we're going to have to fucking bleep that Bleep it out. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Right, would you like a story? I'd love a story, please. Okay. Um, this is... Oh, I think you're going to love it. I'm so ready. I've I actually got, think you're going to love it. I'm coffeeed up. My husband and I got lost on a hike, but found a house deep within the forests of Guatemala. Don't go on a hike. So problem solves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would you go on a would you go on a romantic hike? Oh, what the fuck? Do you it know what? Sounds like, horrific. Part of me is like mm, nice. Uh, like I, I like a walk, but really I don't want to get those walk. No, I do like a walk actually. But I don't like a it, hike. Yeah. What's the difference between a walk and a hike? A hike. Can you? Explain? A hike's an incline. There's like there's a bit of there's a bit of roughage. Oh, you have to get oh, through. I see. Do you know what I mean? You might need a stick. You need some boots. It's a lot. It's a little bit. It's a bit more wild than a walk. They're a wonder. Because I like a walk that's like, I like you know, a three hours and it's over the cliffs. And it, what? And you, and you end up down through the cliff into the pub, pub. on the beach yeah. in Cornwall. That's lovely. Well, yeah, I mean, three hours is about... I'd, I would do a three-hour walk if there was a pub every ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. You, a pub crawl. A pub crawl, Okay, yeah. fine. Anyway, back into the story. We'd been wanting an adventure before starting a family and the pandemic was the kick up the arse we needed. While we were involuntary housebound, we did a lot of research and decided on travelling the Americas for three months. We're from the east of England, so quite frankly, anywhere would have been an adventure. Where do you think? Where? Yes. Newcastle. Do you reckon? Durham. 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 Oh, is it? I'm thinking... We like, don't know if I can do a Dory I'm thinking accent. Ipswich. <laughs> the east... East of England. No, I'm thinking north. I'm thinking quite yeah, that's far too, north. They would have said north of England. I'm going Ipswich. I don't know or where. Or like Suffolk. Buckinghamshire. Sure. Is that east? No. Okay. We were fortunate to be in a position where a three-month sabbatical was a comfortable option for us. My grandparents were wealthy and had left me a generous sum when they passed. And my husband Joseph and I both had great jobs. Oh, bully for you. Fucking hell, Fuck all right. This, is, she, this isn't a scary brag. story, this is just a brag yeah, story. Yeah, fucking humble brag. I'd just turned 30 the week before we left. Joseph was 32. It just felt right, a now or never type scenario. Calgary was our first destination, followed by Vancouver. Then we travelled through the western states of the US down to Mexico. Mexico. We were Look who, high on her mountain in Mexico, start a young shepherd boy, Angelo. He and his wife, he loved us all. <laughs> oh, it was she. I'm going to go join the politicians podcast. Came from a very high family. Sorry, carry on. I had to get that out. It was like a tick. Yeah. Okay. On our first night, Joseph excitedly called out to me as I towel dried my hair after an outdoor shower. Danny, come look at this. I'm going to do his voice like that. Danny or Mary. <laughs> Joseph or Mary. Uh, that's really funny. Yes. Yeah, really good yeah. one. On, <laughs> mm, fucking mm. Hell. On our second full day, we hiked a trail that was noted for its wildlife spotting opportunities, particularly various monkey and bird species. In the process of taking a picture... Hang a on, where are we again? Guatemala. Oh, I thought we were in Surrey. I was like, what the fuck? Surrey? Of, yeah. No, no, they've left Ipswich for the, the big trip of their life to Guatemala. Right. Because oh, Guata- the pandemic hit them up the okay. ass and they were like, we need a holiday. I what part of Surrey you get monkeys and fucking parrots from. Probably that fucking safari. Safari Park, Longley or something. Anyway. Mm. anyway, in the process of taking a picture, I dropped my phone and was taken by surprise as a small monkey took off with it. Hey, I yelled out. I don't believe it. What's up, Danny? Asked Joseph a little ahead of me. I couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> a monkey just took my phone. That's not funny. That's traumatic. Yeah. I know. I'd have been like, you fucking. I'd cry. Seriously, he asked, jogging to me. Where did it go? In the trees over there. 
Oh, little sod, he said, running in that direction. Joseph, don't bother, it's gone. We're not leaving without trying, he yelled back. She sounds like a prick, because anyone that calls someone by their full name... I know, why is he not Joe? Joseph. 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 Uh, I know. Uh, they, they they both are... Ugh. Joseph, I've lost my phone. Please get, get it for me. Joseph, whatever your fucking surname. I want to know. We're not leaving without trying, he yelled back. I reluctantly went into the trees and caught a glimpse of his shirt in the distance. Please don't go any further, Joseph. We need to stay on the trail. I think I can see it. <laughs> you are making these two sounds <laughs> so fucking irritating. They're really irritating. Oh, my God. Like already... A couple of children's entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's that. I think I can see it, I heard him yell. Against my better judgment, I began to weave between the trees, stepping over foliage. Howler monkeys spoke to each other in the treetops. Ah! Ah! Jesus fucking Christ. Probably laughing about the dumb British tourists. I spotted a few colourful birds, but didn't have time to observe their beauty, instead pursuing my silly knight in shining armour who I'd lost sight of. Oh, these two. This is like a fucking shit Jill Mansell novel. <laughs> Joseph, please call out to me. Over here! I could see him waving, allowing me to breathe. When I reached him, I gave him a hug, then slapped his arm. Ow! I was scared, I said, wiping sweat from my brow. But look, he said, pointing up. I couldn't believe it. The little monkey was sitting on a branch, holding my phone. Hey, little one, I said softly, holding up my hands. Please, could you drop my phone down to me? It doesn't speak human, Danny, said Joseph, what? picking up a stick. Shut up, Joseph. They're very intelligent, I said. Not that intelligent. Also, we're in Guatemala. It's more likely to understand Spanish. These two are absolute idiots. I hate they them. They deserve to die. Yeah. Oh, I hope they get. I hope they fucking with die. With a fucking by the rusty monkey. knife. <laughs> yeah. That the monkey's like. Ah, I hope it bites ah. them. Yeah. And they, l- they die very. I thought you said something else. <laughs> oh my God, that's hard. <laughs> Rabies. Um, uh, he brought the stick back as if he was about to throw it. I grabbed his wrist. You're not throwing sticks at the local wildlife. Oh, Jesus Christ. Fuck off. I hate them so much. <laughs> yeah, they need to get in a bin. Oh. Well, asking nicely didn't work, he said, pulling away from me. But then there came a thud as my phone bounced a few feet away from us. It was undamaged too, the soft ground cushioning its fall. I was happy that we could head back to the trail, but that was short-lived. Several hours passed and we couldn't find our way out of the forest. Joseph did his best to console me, but I could tell he was scared too. As the ground began to feel softer and the air more dense and humid, we realised we were nowhere near where we'd come from. Even the plant life looked different. Honestly, morons. I couldn't help but snivel as my nerves got the better of me. A weight was lifted when we spotted a solitary house in a clearing. Joseph, look! I yelled with relief. There was a sudden rustling in the plants to our left, followed by a deep growl. We only had a second to acknowledge it before a large crocodile snapped its jaws in our direction. I screamed as Joseph pulled me towards him. Dejarlas! What? We heard a woman yell from the house. I thought they were doing it then. I was like, oh, Joseph and Danny is a fuck off. The crocodiles growl. I didn't know a crocodile could growl, if I'm honest. I, they can't. Whoever wrote this is Danny or Joseph. <laughs> Lying fucks. <laughs> the crocodile's growls became quieter as it backed up out of sight. We hurried to the moderately sized wooden house, which was elevated a little from the ground on stilts. A woman stood on the steps leading up to the door. She was around mid-thirties with raven black hair that spilled over her shoulders. She was beautiful. She was also heavily pregnant. Oh. Hola! <laughs> Why is she like Forrest Gump on that boat? That's Joseph. Hola! I'm <laughs> so fucking... Hola! Hola, said Joseph. So much! I hate him! I hate him! I hate him! <laughs> oh! He is the worst. Uh, hola! Hola, said hola. Joseph, a little out of breath. Uh, poor favor. Uh, oh, fuck! Lost! Ah. Perdido! Shut up, what's Perdido? I pedo. Mean, lost, yeah. I'm a pedo! <laughs> Hello, I'm lost, I'm a pedo. <laughs> She's like, stay away from my face. <laughs> <laughs> Por favor, lost, Perdido. <laughs> I speak English, she said. Oh, thank God. Please, come inside. She turned and walked up the steps. Joseph and I looked at each other. I'm imagining her as Sofia Vergara. Has she, oh, yes, yeah, stunning. Has she, mis- she like, mistook them for Hansel and Gretel or something? Yeah, probably. She's <laughs> like, out of... She's like, yeah, I read some nursery rhymes. She's like, I made them come to life. Oh my God, Sophia forgot. Imagine, I'd go into Sophia. I'd, I'd completely You'd stay with Sophia, it. wouldn't you? Of course. Yeah. 
She turned and walked up the steps. Joseph and I looked at each other, briefly hesitating before following her into the house. Once inside, I broke down. <laughs> Gracias! I cried. I bet they did the lisp as well. Yeah, yeah 100%. Let, can I have some Gracias. chorizo for dinner? Chorizo. Chorizo. Chose... Joseph put his arm around me as the woman took my trembling hands in hers. I have something for your anxiety, she said. Sit down. <laughs> well, we don't want to be a bother, said Joseph. If you could just point us, no bother, she said. Please, sit. We've got another We've got another Bernard and Bianca on our hands here, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an America. I want to be an America. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're on times too. <laughs> yeah. Grab your face down now. I got something for you. I got something for you. I got anxiety. We took off our backpacks and sat at a table in the rustic kitchen. I think rustic in their mouths is a slur. I was surprised to see electric powered lighting. See, I'm like, why are you surprised? Sophia That's lives. That's rude. I know. It's like it's not our third world in Guatemala. Jesus. Fuck off. I was surprised to see electric powered lighting as wherever we were felt off the grid. The woman boiled some water on a stove then started to prepare food. She put a plate of fruit on the table along with some bread, various breads and some sliced meat. Bread, various breads. <laughs> bread, bread, various <laughs> breads. <laughs> fruit and a pregnant lady. <laughs> um, she, this, is ex, this, is ex, this is exquisite hosting. Do you know what? In South America, the hospitality is like next to none. That's, They're so friendly. That, this do doesn't mean, surprise do mean, me at all. Do you mean second to none? What did I say? Next to no, next to no one. Or <laughs> next to nobody. <laughs> this I, is, I'm so I, bad at phrases. Danny and Second Joseph are horrible, horrible yeah, people because agreed. they do not appreciate the level that Sophia Vergara has gone to. Yeah, they're like, ew, what a peasant. She doesn't have electricity. You're lost in the woods. Yeah, I and know. And she's just got you a fucking fruit And they're fruit, like, fruit what plate. a rustic looking kitchen she has. I'm breads, like, various breads. Yeah. Which is the name of the past episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some sliced meat. We need something this week that's not going to be like, you know, clitoris based. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Eat, she said with a smile, turning back to the stove. I looked at Joseph, who just shrugged. Despite our reservations, we were famished. I used my fingers to eat some mango and banana. Joseph braved the unidentified I used- meat. My fingers. I know. They're Shut gross, aren't they? Up. Hopefully of they're you hopefully did. they're just gonna die soon because this needs to come to an end. Oh. Joseph braved the unidentified meat. Oh well done. Do you want a medal? Oh shut up. Braved the meat. Have oh, because she's going to feel like feed you some fucking offal. Like, she probably oh. is going to kill them. Yeah, I hope so. We're really on her side. Um, he braved the meat, making a sandwich with one of the spreads, which he said was similar to horseradish. Oh, he's he's just Englified her spreads. I hate him. Sorry, <laughs> that's not a word. Anglicised. Anglicised. I can't speak. No. The woman came back and put two hot cups on the table. It smelled strong with herbs and spices. Oh, you, they're You drink poison. this. You you drink this. You feel better. She said warmly. Thank you. I said, taking a small sip along with Joseph. It was so bitter it made my face screw up. Ugh. Joseph audibly groaned in disgust, then looked incredibly apologetic. I should think so. Yeah. The woman laughed. It does not taste good, but it's good for the soul. She tapped her chest and forehead. Poor witch. Because <laughs> she is a witch, isn't she? Yeah, she's going to be definitely a witch. She's got to be a witch. She's got raven hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's, I know. They're, it's all these red herrings. I'm like, she's, well, she's a witch. beautiful, so I reckon she's going to seduce... Old Joseph she, in the bedroom, and he's going to like. Kill him. He's going to go at her like a rabbit with his socks on, because I bet he does keep his socks. Yeah, on. he's the and type. Then he's she'll the type. kill Danny first. That's my. Yeah, um, that's my. That's what I'm that's saying. That's my take. Yeah. Um, we didn't want to be rude, so we continued drinking it. I'm Danny, by the way, and this is my husband Joseph. <laughs> They've gone just halfway through a fruit plate. <laughs> they haven't even introduced themselves yeah. yet. Yeah, they want to eat her food first. Fucking Ipswich I bastards. Them. I am Lorena. She said. Mm. Are those crocodiles dangerous? <laughs> Asked Joseph. <laughs> wow, she's just said her name, Joseph. <laughs> you rude twat. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, no, they're friendly crocodiles. <laughs> crocodiles. They're vegetarian. The only thing they'll do is take that mango out your fingers, Joseph. <laughs> no, they're not a danger to you at all. <laughs> Jesus fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, crocodile's dangerous. It's like he's asking about a little pug or something. <laughs> yeah. Are your pet crocodiles going to eat me? <laughs> I fucking hope so, Joseph. Um, you're a dick. 
They can be, she said, taking a seat. She lovingly rubbed her large belly. But we share this land, so we must respect one another. Beautiful. Will this be your first child? I asked. Oh, a bit rude. A bit rude. She nodded. I am very blessed. Congratulations, I said, reaching across to take Joseph's hand. We'd like to start a family of our own too. Once it's not all home. about you, Danny. It's not all about you. Lorena doesn't We also fuck. don't care. No one cares. Please don't reproduce. You're horrible people. We'd like to start a family of our own too once we're back home. Speaking of which, <laughs> Joseph, let's fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we start now? Oh, what's that weird tea done to me? I've suddenly got a heart on the is size of Texas. Sophia Viagra. Ah, oh, so <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> uh, speaking of which, let's fuck. <laughs> ah. Children. Speaking of which, said Joseph, we'd really appreciate your help getting back to our camp. I thought we meant getting pregnant. I was like, this is weird. <laughs> is there a path we can take or... It will be dark soon, said Lorena. It will not be safe after dark. You can stay here tonight. Uh, we couldn't put you out like that, I said. No, I insist, she said. You will find your way tomorrow. I looked at Joseph as if to say, do something, but he just shrugged. You're very kind, Lorena. He said, we're incredibly grateful, thank you. I freshened up, feeling gross and sticky from the day's heat. Fortunately, I'd packed a spare top and shorts in my backpack, thinking that they could come in handy for that very reason. While Joseph was in the bathroom, Lorena showed me around. It was as quaint and rustic as you'd expect a house in the rainforest to be. An impressive collection, I said, observing a large wall of books. Do you like to read? She asked. Oh yes, I adore reading. My favourite author is Virgilio Rodriguez Macal. Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Honestly, Rodriguez Macal. What is it? Virgilio Rodriguez Macal. Virgilio, Virgil, what? Ver, imagine Virgil, Ver, but put an I-O at the end. Virgilio? Yeah. What is it? Rodriguez. Rod, Rodriguez. <laughs> Rod, Rodriguez. Would you add a lisp onto the end of... Rodriguez. No, because it's South America and okay. they don't do the lisp. Rodriguez. Rodriguez Macal. Macal. Oh, it's beautiful language, isn't it? It is. She showed me his works on the shelf and stroked the spine of one called El Mundo del Misterio Verde. Oh, that's a bit weird. Do you know what that means? No. The world of mysterious green. No. Oh. <laughs> this is my favourite book. I'm afraid my Spanish is terrible, I laughed. I would understand very little. Yeah, no shit, Danny. We went to the back of the house where there was an elevated deck over a large expanse of water with trees and plants growing directly out of it. The sun was beginning to set and it gave such a warm glow. Wow, I said, what a few. <laughs> Welcome to the swamp. <laughs> what are we in Shrek now? <laughs> Welcome to the swamp, motherfuckers. <laughs> That's how she gets Donkey. the gun up. <laughs> Why have you bought all the fairy tale creatures here? You're, you're in Shrek and I'm in a Mexican mafia film. And both are hilarious. Oh, God. We should just stop the story here and both write our own part two. Let the clocks out! <laughs> that was Don't a poor Scottish accent. I uh, welcome to the swamp, said Lorena. Are you out here alone? I asked. You haven't mentioned the baby's father? Oh, well, all right. Yeah. Slut shaming. I know. Danny's such a Catholic little. Yeah, she's a slag. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. She's a slag. I hate she... her so. And slag's one of the worst words, so I'm going to call Danny that because yeah. I hate her. Yeah. She looked down and stroked her belly, a small smile on her lips. I am alone now, but not for long. I'm sorry if I asked too much. I have my sisters nearby and them too. She nodded to the water where some crocodiles had surfaced got a little shiver. In England, we look out back and might see the neighbour's cat <laughs> or the odd hedgehog. Here it's something that wants to eat you. Oh, shut up. She laughed. We have cats too, but they also might want to eat you. Mm. She groaned a little and held her belly. Oh, she is moving tonight. Sorry, this Spanish, this accent is yeah, quite grim. May I? She smiled and took my hand, gently pressing it against her. I could feel as her baby turned inside. How does it feel? I asked. She sighed. Magical, like the greatest honour. It is hard to explain. Oh, I understand, I said. I honestly can't wait for that next chapter in my life. At least, I hope for that next chapter. 
You will be a great mother, Danny, she said. I feel it. Hard disagree. <laughs> yeah, strong, strong. I smiled. Thank you, Lorena, so will you. The baby kicked out suddenly, making me flinch. I laughed it off, and we went back inside. Lorena kindly put us up in a spare bedroom. Joseph stared at me intently as we laid on the unfamiliar bed. He brushed the hair from my face and kissed me, his other hand stroking my inner thigh. Joseph, I said, we can't, not here. I don't know what it is. Maybe the fact that Lorena is smoking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. Like smoking a cigarette or smoking hot? No, he's saying smoking hot. He wants, to, he wants to get down to sack. it. He has got a pregnant woman fetish. Yeah. And that's I mean, it is Sophia on. Vergara or Sophia Viagra, as you call it. Yeah, her. but it's still completely inappropriate. It's and so also, getting if, the horn from like. If Adam was like. You're Airbnb. Yeah, owner. shall we uh, do it? Because Mabel downstairs is really fucking getting my goat. Do you yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd be like. Joseph. I'd be like, why don't you just go and toss yourself off into a lake? <laughs> yes, and then actually. die. <laughs> and then let's die you. Um, <laughs> I don't maybe the fact that Lorena is smoking. I don't know what I'm doing in like Louis III. Um yeah. Hey, I laughed, playfully slapping him, but I couldn't deny I felt the same way too. We made love, then fell asleep to the sounds of nature. Ah, poor Lorena. Ah. Hmm? Poor Lorena, it's just been used as porn. I know. I woke up in the early hours when it was still dark. I stirred for a while but became restless, so I left the bedroom and went to the deck for fresh air. The swamp was bathed in moonlight, giving it an enchanting look. Despite the terrifying experience of being lost earlier, I felt grateful that it had led us to Lorena and this beautiful part of the world. As I was looking around, I spotted something in the forest to the left. There was something white that stood out, but I couldn't quite tell what it was at that point. As I kept staring, I began to notice small details and I realised I was looking at the skull of a large animal. Its empty eye sockets appeared to be looking in my direction. I assumed it was attached to a tree as it was suspended a few feet from the ground, but it turned and disappeared into the forest. <gasps> I gasped and stepped back. When I turned to go back inside, Lorena was standing in the doorway making me scream. I did not mean to scare you, she said. Lorena! I said, clutching my hands to my chest. I just I saw something in the trees. A, a, a skull, a large animal skull. I was breathing heavily and she took my hands. You are far from home, Danny. We have different ways here. There are villages nearby with ancient tribes. Some of these tribes wear the skulls as a... How do you say? Hat. <laughs> as a hat. <laughs> as a fucking hat, Danny. I'm gonna get my Glock out. <laughs> you say, I shook my head. Tradition? Superstition? See, like this. Oh my goodness, I said. Are they dangerous? No, she said. Not to us. I took a deep breath and laughed uneasily. <laughs> well, I wanted an adventure and I certainly got that. <laughs> I went back to bed thinking I wasn't going to get any sleep at all. But within minutes of hearing Joseph's horrible snores, it says gentle breaths, I joined him. I awoke to sunlight and the smell of something delicious cooking, as well as an empty bed. Joseph was eating breakfast in the kitchen. Of course he fucking was, the eager beaver. He wants to be around Lorena. <laughs> Joseph was eating her out in the kitchen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With his fingers in some mango, like the dirty twat he is. <laughs> Good morning, I said. And Lorena was already guiding me to sit at a tape. What? What put on there? Good morning, I said, and Lorena was already guiding me to sit at the table, putting a plate of eggs and avocado in front of me. Oh, you're spoiling us, Lorena. It is my pleasure, she said. Danny, said Joseph, Lorena is fishing this morning and I've offered to help. Oh, she you is. know how much I love to fish. What's up, Joseph? <laughs> I do, I said, but perhaps we should be thinking about getting back to camp. I'm sure they were concerned that we didn't come back yesterday. They have our money already, he said. I doubt they care. His response irritated me a little. I disagree. I think they'll be searching for us. If not now, then soon. I'm sorry, said Lorena. I don't want to cause trouble. Not at all, I said. We're so grateful for what you've done for us, but I worry that we'll be causing trouble by being missing. Danny, we only live once, he said. I don't know what it is, but I love it out here. Just let me have this. Oh my, Just for today, please. He wants to get his... He wants to get his hand away with Lorena. Yeah. I'm going to end it there for him pleading for him to go fishing with... Sophia. That is very exciting. I don't know. I think it's going to be a Hansel and Gretel kind of 
I, yeah, I think we can't trust our bewitching, beautiful Lorena, but no. I don't blame her for anything that she might be about to do to these characters. No, because... Lorena, do your worst. No, don't. Uh, no, do. Yeah. I'm okay. just trying to find my... <clears throat> I think I've deleted it and I need to find it again. Um, book. Um, <clears throat> do you remember where you got to? I think so. I'm going to go... I'm going to do part two of my... Um, go to... Go to don't go to the ghost town in. Oh yeah, in dot, nowhere dot, dot. in I double N. Um, okay, so this guy has gone and found um, the ghost in he ghost town in whatever because uh, he had nowhere to stay. He got there and do you remember the man with the brown jacket, the brown trousers, the brown everything's brown, yeah. and he was like, "It's fifty bucks natural." Do you remember that? Yeah, that was good. That was a, I'm very impressed with my um, South America. Excellent. Um, okay, so um, we got to we got the way room, where he it was, was room thirteen. Room thirteen. He got to room thirteen, and he was very very grateful for the man taking him in. And he was like, "I'm happy to accommodate you, son. Take a candle here and light away." Oh yeah, that was it. Okay. Um, so I grabbed the key from him along with one of the candles. I looked down and saw the room number etched into the face of the key, room thirteen. The old man continued to show his unflattering smile as I nodded my head and turned to the hallway. Against the dim glow of candlelight, I saw a row of vintage photographs lining the wall. The people in them were dressed from the Victorian era. Give me a break. I'm no. sick of the Victorian era. Walking down the old creaking floorboards, I saw the hallway split into two paths. On the right was the staircase to the second floor. To the left sat the intersection of another hallway with the vague out... Oh, I did... I've done all this. I'm sorry. The deer head was mounted on the wall. Oh, the deer... um, He thinks that the deer looks at him. Yes, that's it. I saw the fucking deer head move in the peripheral of my vision. That's it. Right. Yeah. Okay, sorry, everybody. Frozen on the steps, I slowly turned around and peeked over the low wall which separated the hallway divide. The deer head looked straight on down the hall, a vacant stare in its beady eyes. Mm. Okay, I'm really tired. I need to get some sleep. I whispered. I'm oh, sorry. I'm really tired. I need to get some sleep. Yeah. Making my way to the top of the staircase, I tiptoed through the halls looking for room 13, all the while keeping my head on a swivel. I don't know what that means. No, I... My, my room ended up being at the very back of the hallway. Slotting the key into the doorknob, I stopped and turned around when I heard something behind me. It sounded like a group of people whispering something unintelligible. Very good. But there wasn't anything there in the hallway behind me. Just those vintage photographs sitting above burgundy carpets on brown floral wallpaper. Ugh. That's minging. Doesn't that sound horrible? You'd see it in like a hipster <clears throat> calf in yeah, minging. Haggiston. But Ugh, I hate yuck. the name Haggiston. Shaking my head, I quickly unlocked the door and pushed my way inside. The room I stepped into seemed cramped. A double bed with a wooden frame sat against the wall, facing a lone window which revealed only tree branches on the other side. Two tables accompanied the bed on each side. I didn't spend any time thinking or looking at anything else. I just set the candle down on the table, tucked myself in and closed my eyes. Yeah, not long left. Okay. Um, That's when I saw it. Perched on the ceiling, obscured by the shadows of the night was a distorted human face. Frozen in fear, I sat there and watched this face as it slowly moved across the ceiling, shifting its facial expressions in horrifying and inhuman ways. The thing looked like it was in constant agony. Once it hovered directly above me, I heard faint whispering coming from its mouth. The very same whispering I heard in the hallway earlier. Ice ran through my veins when the shadowy face began to descend from the ceiling, heading right for me. Taking control of my body, I let out a piercing scream and jolted out of bed. Crashing through the door, I ran down the hallway. Time slowed as my heart blasted in my chest. Hundreds of those faces began materialising in the very walls, slowly floating out and into my direction. No, 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 fuck this! Fuck all of this! (laughs) It can't be real! It's potty mouth! My screams only seemed to anger the shadow entities, which now lunged out of the walls with glowing red eyes. Making a sharp turn, I I bolted down the staircase, my feet crashing down loudly with each step. When I reached the bottom, I froze in horror. Blocking the hallway ahead... I've just spat on my face, I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Blocking the hallway ahead stood a shadowed figure ten feet tall. 
It had a rotting deer skull for a head with piercing red eyes. <sighs> Horrible demonic whispering radiated from the creature as it lurched forward. That says booking it back up the staircase. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I ran down the hallway opposite of room 13 until I hit a dead end with a single window. Turning to see that fucking Wendigo-esque beast. Wendigo. Don't know what that means. Wendigo. Wendigo. Hot on my trail. I made the decision to jump out of the fucking window. What? I landed hard in a thicket blanket of bushes below. In a thicket? In a thick blanket of bushes below. Twisting my ankle in the process. Oh my God. Getting to my feet, I hopped out of the bushes. It says hoped, but I think it means hopped. I hopped out of the bushes and looked up at the window. A pair of red eyes locked with mine. No body to be seen. Mm. The eyes slowly backed off and disappeared into the darkness. Frantic, I ran through the thick foliage and back into the parking lot where I thanked God to see and sit in my car. I booked it out of town. That must be a phrase. I booked mm. it. I booked it out of town and drove all night back to the highway until sunrise. Greg said oh, I look like mulled over shit when I arrived for the funeral. Wow. Oh, yeah, he's seeing old Greg. He's, oh, yeah, he's going to the funeral. And I wasn't able to offer the emotional support I wanted to give him. I took a different route entirely on the way back home, never wanting to see the sign for that godforsaken town again. The thing that bothers me, though, is that when I go back and look on Google Maps, Twins Grove isn't there. <clears throat> doesn't even show up on the old paper maps. Where the fuck did I go that night? So it's like, a, like, like the room of requirement, but horror. I have. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean. I like that. I've got, a, I've got a short, really creepy one. Have you? Yeah. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yes. Another story, please, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My bedroom was upstairs. <laughs> Great. I had a good view from my window to see the new neighbours move in next door. Early in the morning. There was a man and woman carrying boxes into the house. I figured they must have been a couple. My eyes travelled to the neighbour's vacant upstairs bedroom window, which was directly across from mine. It was open and inside was a girl who looked about my age. She saw me and monitored and monitored oh, fuck's sake. She saw me and motioned for me to open my window. So I did. She leaned out the window, curved her hand around her mouth and whispered, Nice to meet you. I'm Sarah. I laughed. <laughs> nice to meet you, Sarah. I'm Sam. She smiled. Keep your window open, she said, and moved out of sight. I was confused. Keep my window open? She returned with something in her hand, and then she tossed it over to me. It was a paper aeroplane. Okay. It slowly and gently made its way through the air and into my window, onto the floor behind me. I walked over and picked it up. On the top was written, open. I opened it and there was a message. Hey Sam, I'll come over tonight and introduce myself. I thought it was a bit strange and I wrote back, come over tonight, what do you mean? I turned around to toss it back, but she wasn't there. The window was still open, so I tossed it in anyway, thinking she'll reply sooner or later. It was late into the evening and still no reply from Sarah. My mum invited the new neighbours over for dinner and I figured this is what Sarah meant by coming over tonight. Honey, come down for dinner, my mum shouted. I went downstairs into the dining room to sit at the table, but I didn't see Sarah, just her parents. I couldn't help but ask, where's Sarah? The man and woman stared at me, as if I said something out of place. Excuse me? I repeated myself. Sarah, your daughter. The woman put her hands up, covering her mouth. Tears flowed down her face. The man stood. Our daughter died a year ago in an accident. I don't know what you're up to, but that's enough. They both left the house immediately. Mum glared at me. Why would you do that? Just go to your room. I don't want to look at you. Mm. A flurry of confusion was spinning in my head. I couldn't speak. I made my way back to my room, turned on the light and lay on my bed. Then a paper aeroplane flew through my window. Oh my God. I picked it up and looked out of the window. Sarah was standing in the darkness of her room. My heart was pounded. 
My heart was bashed. <laughs> Your arteries are blocked. Oh, fucking blocked. Oh, God. Uh, my heart was pounding. She moved closer until the moonlight hit her face. Sounds aggressive. Her eyes were dark and her skin was grey. I looked down to read the message. Behind you. <laughs> My lights flickered off. The floorboards behind me squeaked in a dark whisper into my ear. Sam. <laughs> that really creeped me out. That's that time. really yeah, creepy. Yeah, enjoy. Yeah, scary. Oh, you creepy yeah, gal. Creepy gal. Love it, though. Creepy gal. Oh, that's very good. Very good. Um, Love it. Would you like another story? Yes, please. I love stories. I love, I love stories. I love stories. Okay, you ready? Yes. Let me just get myself into a good seated position. If the streetlights start blinking, run. I first noticed it in a Walmart parking lot. American. The kids had too much energy, so we went for an evening Walmart trip. As we walked back to the car, I noticed one of the street lights in the far corner blinking on and off. There's something about blinking street lamps that's inherently creepy. I don't know why, maybe because we're evolutionarily designed to be afraid of the dark and blinking street lights often go out, or maybe it's because of the stop motion effect. There's a reason why haunted houses use strobe lights all the time. In any case, I found myself staring at it as we helped the kids in the car. And that's when I noticed something was off. As a car drove by on the main road, the streetlight blinked off. And there was something there that obscured the red light. And there was something there that obscured the red tail lights for just a split second. It happened so fast, I thought I imagined it. Especially when the light blinked back on in an instant later, there was clearly nothing standing under it. I didn't think much of it, and I got into the car. As we pulled out onto the main road, I glanced back at it. It was still flickering. Something about it sent a chill up my spine. We pulled out onto the road, and the light disappeared from view. Dumbledore's come get it, honey. Oh yeah, it's this blinker thing, mm, isn't it? Blinker thing. Blinker thing. What's it called? Pretty outy. <laughs> the, That's it. It is something like that, anyway. <laughs> The kids went right to bed and then my husband and I were unwinding in the living room. I was flipping through some pages on my Kindle when something caught my eye. The lamppost outside our house was blinking on and off. I walked over to the window. What's up? Charles asked behind me and I'd been standing there a few minutes. The light's flickering. So? There was a street light flickering in the Walmart parking lot too, I turned to him. Isn't that weird? Not really. He went back to his snacks. Pushing out the uneasy feeling in my stomach, I started to turn away. Wait. I turned back. There was a light on in the house across the street. But when the lamppost blinked off, the black edge of the window wasn't quite straight. I squinted at it. There was a bump or a curve, almost like a semicircle that was poking into the golden square of the illuminated window, like something was standing there partially blocking out the window's light. Except nothing was there, because the shape disappeared every time the light blinked back on. Charles, come back over here. Do I have to? I see something. It's weird, I don't know. I glanced back at him and frowned. He was leaning back in the recliner, feet up, stuffing himself with chips. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thick. <laughs> Why are all the men in these stories, these like layabout, <laughs> shoving fucking undiscovered meats into their fucking gobs? Undiscovered like... meat! It's <laughs> <laughs> so grim. I'm like, undiscovered just meat. do better. Stuffing himself <laughs> with chips. <laughs> Please come over. All right, all right. He heaved himself off the couch and came Fuck over. So. I just des I described the curve to him, the little sliver of silhouette I was seeing. I don't see it. What, you don't see it? He shook his head. There's nothing out there, Becca. I squinted out into the darkness again. Then I gave up and settled back with my book. Something woke me in the middle of the night. I rolled over and tried to go back to sleep, but then I heard it again. A distinct... <laughs> 
from somewhere in the house. Charles, I heard something, I said, shaking his shoulder, but I didn't want to wait for him to wake up. I flipped on the hall light and ran to the kids' rooms. My son, thankfully, was sleeping soundly. I leapt from my daughter's room and I stopped dead. In the crack under the door, I could see a flickering bluish light. I grabbed the doorknob and burst inside. The nightlight, it was blinking on and off, erratically, casting the entire room in jerky stop-motion flashes. I ran over to the bed. Thank God my daughter was there, sleeping peacefully. I glanced back towards the hall to look for Charles. I froze. There was a dark shape in the corner of the room. I could only see it for a moment when the nightlight flickered out. As soon as it came back on, the corner was empty. My heart pounded in my chest. I stared at the corner. Off. The shape was there. On. It wasn't. Off. The shape looked like someone crouched in the corner. On. It looked closer. Off. Oh God, it was closer. On. The intervals were getting longer. I was paralysed. My breath was stuck in my lungs. Off. Fuck. It was halfway across the room. On. The light blinked on and remained on. That didn't give me any comfort. I couldn't see it. It could be anywhere. It could be right in front of my off. Oh, I screamed. No. Oh my god. It oh was god. right in front oh of god. me. Oh my god. No, this is horrible. Filling up my entire vision, I backed away, putting myself squarely between my daughter and me. Yellow light filled the room. Becca? Charles stood in the doorway, bleary eyed. I glanced around wildly, but the room was empty. The nightlight was still off. I leapt forward and pulled it out of its socket. It clattered to the floor. And then I began to sob as I told Charles everything. The next day, the whole thing seemed ridiculous. What, I really saw some figure huddled in our house that disappeared in the light? It made no sense. It was much more likely that I'd seen some sort of sleep paralysis demon or my half-asleep brain misinterpreted shadows or something. When I went into my daughter's room later, something caught my eye. Three coarse, long black hairs oh, laying cute. on the carpet. <laughs> laying on the carpet. Curly and, little bastards. <laughs> and now, as the sun is setting and the deep shadows of dusk are filling the house, I'm terrified to turn on any lights. Oh, that was very good. That was horrible. Fucking so the lights were just turning themselves off and on. Yeah. Have like, you seen? Is it lights out? No, but I know I want to watch it because we've done a story that's like it. Yeah, we? it's a, it's kind of like that. Is it? Yeah, I think that's oh, kind that of the same premise. Me the fuck but out. to be honest, I actually did try and watch it, and I it scared me so much I could hardly watch it. Maybe we should do I'm that chicken. for our new Patreon tier. <laughs> this is very exciting. It isn't is it? actually. Um, so for our um, next Patreon tier, um, we and Hannah every month are going we to. We and Hannah. We and Hannah. We and Hannah. Is uh, your new name? We. The Royal We. Um, we're going to watch a scary movie. Um, and we're going to film ourselves watching it. So it's kind of like a goggle box commentary on what's going on. And obviously we'll take suggestions of what to watch. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll do some of the classics. But basically we're going to stream ourselves watching um, scary shit. Oh, it's going to be so scary. I'm so excited. But I, I don't know how I'm going to sit through lights out. Even like we could always do like little ones, movies. We're going to have short. to do it in the day, aren't we? Oh, it doesn't bode well really? for me ever sleeping again, but yeah. Right, let me find... We are committed to the bit. Okay, um, so you know last week we were talking about like West Virginia and I think the Appalachia, uh, I might be saying that wrong, Appalachia, um, th that's where like the skinwalkers and like it's... It's Mothman territory. We were talking about it a bit, weren't we? Yeah. And all this West Virginia stuff. Apparently, it's haunted to shit. And I found a story. Um, and it goes a little like this. Hit me. My older sister is a through hiker and goes backpacking often. We grew up in Appalachia in a very remote area. Growing up poor, we spent a lot of time camping. And now that we're older, she lives closer to home and regularly goes camping with my parents. Cute. We've had our fair share of bear and wild cat encounters, but nothing like this has happened before. Today, I called out of work with a stomach bug. I woke up from a nap and my sister texted me after... I woke up from a nap and my sister texted me asking if she could give me a call. I live about five hours away, so I immediately said yes, fearing it was an emergency. When I answered, 
I could hear her footsteps very fast and her hurried breath in the phone. She said that she was in a ridge taking photos of a cave system she found near a large rock formation. When she made it to the clearing, she heard a man call her name. It echoed through the woods. It was then that she reached out to me. While I was talking to her, I could hear my dad's voice in the background. She said that she was still an hour from her camp. Mm. When she said she was alone, I felt the iciest feeling down my neck. Uh. I asked her what the man's voice sounded like. She paused and said, It sounded like several voices at the same time, but the loudest sounded like dad. I stayed with her on the phone all the while hearing something that was trying to sound like my dad. He's a lifetime smoker and very tall, so he has a low, booming voice that I always found comforting up until now. When she got to the campsite, I told her that I was hearing it the entire time and thought he was there with her. She thought I was trying to tease her, but once she believed me, we were both rightfully spooked after that. My dad is very much alive and well. Does anyone know what entity would do this? And how she can protect herself while she's alone in her mm. tent tonight. Jesus Christ. Tents are fucking terrifying. Yeah. And I don't think... The moral of that story is don't go camping in Appalachia, Appalachia. I mean, I've, I'm, what's that, a mimic? Um, Which is one of, the, like, out of all the stories we've done, I really don't like when something is like, I heard my cousin's voice, I heard my mum's voice, except it's not. I just, yeah, I've got, I had a very similar story to that actually, but I'll save that for, for next okay. week. A young boy lay sleeping in his bed when he heard footsteps outside his room. He peeked out of his, what? He peeked out of his eyes, it says. <laughs> he peeked out of his room to see what was happening. His door swung open to reveal a murderer carrying the corpses of his parents. <laughs> After silently propping them up on a the chair. End. The end's done. <laughs> After si uh, uh, Do you know what? Let me start again. Start because, again. Start okay. again. A young boy lay... <laughs> a young boy lay sleeping in his bed when he heard footsteps outside of his room. He opened his eyes to see what it was. He was just about to get out of bed when his door swung open to reveal a murderer carrying corpses of his parents. After silently propping them up on a chair, he wrote something on the wall in the blood of the dead bodies. He, hid the, he then got up and hid under the child's bed. The child knew that he thought he was sleeping, so that the child was scared beyond belief. He couldn't read the writing on the wall and he knew the man was under his bed. Like any child would, he pretended that he'd slept through the whole thing and he still hadn't woken up yet. He lay still as the bodies. He lay as still as the bodies, quietly hearing the breaths from under his bed. An hour passed and his eyes started to adjust to the darkness. He tried making out the words, but it was a struggle. Then he saw them. He gasped. When he finally read out the sentence... I know you're awake. It read. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it horrible? Minging. Isn't it horrible? It's vile. It's vile. 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 It's vile. 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 <laughs> That's it's horrible, isn't it? Okay, um, I've got a two-sentence horror. Hit me. I need to find goosebumpies. Wait, I need. I need undivided attention. Okay, it's two sentences. Okay. My daughter wakes me up in the middle of the night to tell me how old she's turning tomorrow by holding up four fingers. I stay up the rest of the night trying to get her to tell me where or who she got the fingers from. <laughs> hey, Molly! <laughs> Jesus, fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. I think God. that is... Um, I think someone who's like 11 wrote that. I love that. How good, good is that? That's How good, good is like that? It. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. Are we doing goosebumps? We're doing goosebumps, baby. Ah, I'm going to choose so well. We're doing well. goosebumps, baby. I don't think you are. I think you're going to do just as shit as me. This is goosebumps. Hey, <laughs> Reader beware. beware. I choose the scare. So this is Escape from the Carnival of Horrors. Oh, yeah. By R.L. Stein. I think I remember this. Do you? 
Do I you? fucking can't. Do you? I do. Abo. I do, I do, I do, I do. What do you want to do? I don't know, Patty. What do you want to do? Not fair, Brad. I asked you first. Patty and Brad, your two best friends. I Pick love up, you should Patty fit them with Brad. better names, to be honest. Arguing, as usual. It's the last week of August, and Patty and Brad haven't stopped fighting since you started your Edinburgh Fringe Festival. <laughs> they definitely fancy each other. <laughs> if they're fighting, it's. Ah, oh, yeah, it's hair pulling. flirting. Severe sexual tension, yeah. I hope. And that's they're so annoying probably that I'm the third wheel. I should stop saying that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you are the definitely third oh, wheeling here. Boring. Um, Patty likes being bossy. You don't mind, though, it's no big deal. It's hard to win a fight with her anyway. You don't know why Buddy. <laughs> Baddy. Oh, you don't even know why Baddy even tries. <laughs> Batty and Baddy and Prad. Baddy and Paddy. You guess it's because he doesn't really want to look like a wimp in front of a girl. This is very outdated. Yeah. There's nothing to do, I guess. I'll just go home, Brad says. He shoves his hands in his pockets, then his shoulders slump and he sort of shrivels up like a penis. <laughs> doesn't say that. Doesn't say that. You guess Brad is a kind of a wimp, even if he is your best friend. You're mm. so boring, Brad, Patty complains. Whenever Patty complains, her freckles really pop out. Now there are about a million of them spread across her face. Which is spot everywhere. <laughs> hey, I know what we should do. Patty suddenly bursts out. Good page two. Mm. Let's bike over to Bennett's Field and watch them set up the carnival. I don't know, you answer. It's getting dark and Mum said I have to be in by nine. Oh, God, I'm such a fun sponge. You're, oh, you're complete. This is very much you. Oh, it's yeah, only a quick it bike is. ride, Brad <laughs> Are you some kind of wimp? How many times can you say the word wimp? <laughs> Brad calling Boys you are a wimp. Boys are wimps. Brad calling you a wimp? You can't believe it. Okay, okay, you agree. But if it's as bad as last year, there won't be much to see. Don't you remember the main attraction? You remind them. The ride called Terror Track turned out to be a baby choo choo train that circled around and around and around. It doesn't matter what you say. Patty's made up her mind. You're going to ride over to the carnival. A hot, humid breeze blows in your face as you pedal along. Paddy's in the lead, no surprise, and ba Brad... You really struggle with his name. I am struggling with Brad. And Brad's puffing behind you. It's dark by the time you reach Bennett's Field. You and your friends drop your bikes in the grass and race towards the moonlit field, towards the huge wooden fence that surrounds the carnival. Mm. Does Brad have asthma? Yeah, probably. Yeah. As you reach the carnival entrance, you hear music coming from inside. Not the usual corny organ stuff they always play, but some really strange music. Mm. It sounds familiar and totally new all at the same time. Brad stretches his neck to try and peer over the fence, but no luck. The fence is way too high. Patty jiggles the padlock on the gate. It's sealed shut. I guess we'll have to wait until tomorrow night when the carnival opens. No. Brad says. No way, Patty says. Mm. Let's climb the fence now. Are you crazy? Brad says, we'll get caught. Come on, there's probably no one in there, Patty replies. Your friend turns to you to cast the, the, the deciding vote. You glance at your watch, it's also oh, it's almost 9pm. If you're going to get home in time, you should start back now. What are you going to do? Are you going to go home, turn to page 10, or are you going to climb the fence? Oh, I mean, I just never know if R.L. Stein is double bluffing me here. But no, I know, it seems like... It would be. It seems like obviously to stay in the to stay in the thing, you should go over the fence. Yeah. But then, but then sometimes it's like you crawl over the fence. You're yeah. dead. The end. Yeah. I'm going to crawl over the fence because that's what I want to do. Okay. I want to have a bit of fun. Okay, fine. Let's do it. You say to your friends. Let's climb over the fence. Patty is halfway up before you finish speaking. You let Brad go next. You're last. You fall into a puddle of acid. Your dad. No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> I just absolutely know that's a lie. It's a hard a puddle climb. of acid. That's, yeah, I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was really bottom on the spot. A puddle, <laughs> a puddle of, of acid. acid. I was going to say a puddle of knives. I realised that was ridiculous. <laughs> uh, like even that. more ridiculous than a puddle of acid. Um, it's a hard climb up. There's really no place on the fence to get a good grip. But you make it to the top, swing your legs over and tumble down. You land on the grass. You're inside. Mm. You and your friends gaze around. It's pretty dark. The only light comes from torches. At first, the carnival looks the same as it always does. Dinky rides, hot dog wagons. Then the lights start to flicker on every corner of the field. The rides start to move. It's as if the whole place is magically coming to life. That's it, yeah. Hey, look at that giant roller coaster, you exclaim, pointing up ahead. Yeah, that's creepy stuff. They never had a roller coaster before. Yeah, Brad agrees. And the whole place is a lot bigger than last year. This is awesome! 
Patty says as she spits the water. Patty. Patty. A patty. A patty on a crack. A patty. We'll never mm. leave the Irish alone. We do apologise. You and Brad take off to Patty. You all stop in front of the roller coaster. Wow, Patty says as she gazes up at it. It's like a rocket to outer space. Beyond the roller coaster, you spy a castle surrounded by a moat and a spooky looking haunted house sitting high atop a hill. This is a pretty good carnival. Mm. These are the coolest rides I've ever seen, you say. They still have that dumb choo choo train over there, but we could ride this stuff all night and never go near it. Patty grabs your arm and tugs you over to the far side of the carnival to the midway. Brad races after you. Hey, where are all those dinky wooden booths from last year, you ask as you gawk at the amazing games of chance. They're gone, and in their place are giant video games and huge spinning wheels studded with hundreds of blinking coloured lights. Get a load of that! Brad suddenly cries out. You and Patty spin around. You can't believe what you see. We will carry on. Ooh, love it. Oh, this is a good one. Mm, I think I it'll be quite good, this one. one. Do yeah. you? I've never heard of it. I, well, wasn't there an actual Goosebumps book that wasn't about the endings called Carnival of Horrors? Or oh, like, probably, yeah. Like, it's, it, listen, nothing will ever be as good as Camp Jolly Jam, okay? Um, I'm going to do... Creep of the Week. 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 Creep of the week, creep of the week, creep of the week. Oh, I love that. It's good me goosebumps. Okay. Hit me, please. Uh, this is from Erin. Hi there. I love the podcast and I thought I'd share a story oh, thanks, that someone Erin. told me a few weeks ago. So, I was sat at my local having a pint, which I do a lot, lol. <laughs> lol. And was chatting with some blokes who I know from the weekly pub quiz that my friends and I do often. Love it, Erin. This is, you're, 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 you're a gal. gal. You're a ghost hunt. Mm-hmm. We got chatting about the uni house I moved out of last July and I was saying how I always thought it was haunted as weird things happened. But then I wasn't sure as there were other possible explanations. Story for another time, maybe. One of the men said he'd only ever had one proper paranormal experience, but it had really shaken him, which is the story I wanted to share. He said that when he was younger, he went with his mum to test drive a new car. The family are car fanatics and always go on about the best models or whatever, and the car they were going to test drive had been one they'd been very excited to try, as they'd done their research, and it was supposedly a really good car. He explained that bit a bit more, but I don't speak mechanics, so it was all gibberish. <laughs> speak they are also they are thieves, mechanics. They try and tell you loads of shit, and then you have to pay up. Hate them. Oh, I wish I had an opinion Hang on this. Hang on, Aaron didn't say that this person's like a friend or related. No, just a bloke in the pub. Fine. Yeah. They got the keys from the salesman and got in the car to test drive it. Whilst they were driving round, however, he said that he had this really weird feeling that someone was sat behind him. He kept looking over his shoulder, but there was no one there. After a while, his mum asked why he kept looking back and he explained, to which she laughed. But then a few minutes later, she started doing the same and said she now got the same feeling. The feeling got so strong that they sped back to the car garage and got out as quick as they could. The salesman ran out and asked if they liked the car. They explained that they didn't, saying it had a bad feeling to it. They expected the salesman to laugh at them, but instead his face dropped. He explained that the car had been test driven several times that week already, with everyone having the same reaction and stating they'd felt like someone was in the back. Oh my gosh. He then went back into the garage and they followed. Turns out, the car had been involved in some accident, to which it had been fixed and put back up for sale. But the people who were sat in the back of the car had passed away. Oh, fudge. I've known this bloke for a while and they're not the sort to make something up like that. Whether it's true or not, though, I don't know. But I had chills when he told me it and I still find it creepy now. Oh, my God. Hope you're both well anyways and can't wait to hear the next podcast. Thank you so much, Erin. That is creepy AF. That's horrendous. Something being in the back of the car. I can't hear you. Something being in the back of the car freaks me out. Oh, don't. It's just the worst. Welcome to We Get Haunted, so you don't have to. So you don't have to. Okay. Uh, Where are your cards? Yes, I need to give you the thing to divine it. It's a lit. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do it in five minutes. Yeah? So shall I um, set them out? Let's see your nine. We're going to do Susie's cards as she did to me the other week, see if we can tell her future. 
future is near. The future is near. Oh my god, that was fast. Okay. So we've got. So what have I got? We've got the ten of spades what first it, of all here. Um, that's a disappointment. So that's good. Um, <laughs> I am a disappointment. We've got a seven of spades. Unpleasant news. I'm sorry. This is really bad. Oh, <laughs> it's a terrible, terrible. Jesus Christ! Reading. You're gonna. This is really bad. But Susie. next to the king of spades. Where's the king? <laughs> Where are all the things? I can't see the king. Sort of thing. Hmm, where are those? Fuck. I don't know. I, I can't find them. Okay, we don't... Oh, sorry, okay. King of Spades. Uh, a literary man, one who desires would leave him to the pulpit or the platform. So you've got disappointing news. Sorry, unpleasant news, a big disappointment, and a man who reads. A man who reads and wants to be a vicar. Which is great, yeah. Okay. Great, so that's not too bad. And number seven is a journey, but it turns out it's not going to be a very pleasant one. Um, <laughs> and that's me journeying away from the disappointment. Oh, how uh, it's all turning around. Okay. It's all turning around. Ten of diamonds is money, joy, and success. You're fine. Oh my god, you're that's, absolutely that one fine. is the one that's that really the one that's spoke what we all want. Isn't yeah, it? and that's it's in the middle, which means great yeah. arcana vibes. Yeah. That's it. So thank God for that. You're okay. Okay. Um, number nine. Number nine means a wish. I, ha I have loads of wishes. Number nine means a wish. Ooh, I love a wish. Yes. And then what have we got there? We've got the Queen of Hearts. Yeah. Who's she? She oh she's a she's a sassy girl. She's a she's <laughs> some trying to find it. The Queen <laughs> The King of Dark. We've done that. Okay, hang on. Ah, oh, do you know what? This is so fucking hard. Why is it so hard to Divination read this? is hard, but um, Divination's hard, guys. The thing is it's just it the just king. comes to me naturally. So I'm gonna make it up. Um, the queen is um, a fair head, a gal great like me. time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I I want my money back, please, on this reading. No, it's a great time. It's a great time. A live podcast show. That's weird, isn't it? That's it's <laughs> a sold out podcast show. What's the club um, of knaves? The club of what? The knave. They call the Jack the knave. Oh, do they? See, I can Who's only he? find the king. Oh, God, you've got the lost Jack's down the rabbit really hole. hard. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I'm going to make that up as well. Um, that's a great Edinburgh run where you don't die in your haunted house. Thank you. And what's the final one? Nine of clubs, please. Nine of clubs. Susie. What? What does it say? Susie. What? What? A proposal. <laughs> am I going to? Oh my get... god, we're going to have a wedding! Oh my god! I, would I caught love the bouquet. It if you got... Shut up! I caught the bouquet and Johnny uh, grabbed the garter. What? So <laughs> like the woman, yeah, after he, bride. He, yeah, give me your thigh. He touched up the bride and <laughs> all got Great. a bit awkward. Wow! Oh, I'm not going to get... get married. No, what no. do you mean? No. You're not do you want to get married? Nah, no, never do I. Not for me. Okay, but, but hey, someone might propose. Someone to Someone might propose. Well, or Johnny proposes, you say no, and then it all goes to shit. <laughs> a disappointment, <laughs> and then we go full circle. Disappointing news. A journey. Yeah. Ah, but then oh, are we going to have to wait for all that to get the money bit? It will come if if we if one of us gets rich, the other one gets rich. Yeah, agreed. Because so, this is to do with. The vibe here. Yeah, well, this is the pod. Yeah. Okay, it's wow. The pod. Um, well, that brings and us I to the end And I can't believe we're of... going to sell out our live show. I mean, so <laughs> you're going to have to buy tickets, guys, because we're going to sell out very soon, according to the gods. It's the probably sold out gods. already. Um, thank you so much for joining this us. This has been episode 37. This has been incredible. Probably going to be called Unpleasant. Uh, no, what was it? Undiscovered Meats? Oh, yeah. Oh, we've got so many Delicious. potential titles. Um, thank you this. so much. This has been loads of fun. See you later. See you later. Bye. bye. Okay, we'll just match that time.